Uh, for, for some brief comments, uh, first I'd like to submit for the record um, uh, for unanimous consent, uh, uh, several organizations have, have provided input, including the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget of the Importance of the Bipartisan Fiscal Commission uh, in my second term. Uh, so I ascended to the chair pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only reason I'm here. I sat and watched for 20 years. I agree. I absolutely agree. This is the place we should fix this. The Congress is the bipartisan group that should actually do this. I'm not going to sit around and watch for another 20 years, us not be able to do it. A bipartisan fiscal commission will not be easy for any single person on this side of the aisle or this side of the aisle to vote for. But the fundamental problem is that we haven't had a chance to vote on it yet. The members on the lower part of the dais like, we all want to fix this. We all want to be a part of the solution here, right? We need a catalyst to get it so it comes to the floor. And as I've talked in every speaker debate, the battle that I've had, I didn't expect to have so many conversations about this in nine months, but every single time I've said, we have to have a debt commission because Congress has failed to do this. I sat there for 20 years as I was kind of like watching, right? Like, what in the world? Why can't we get this figured out? Utah has a rainy day fund. We have a balanced budget every single year, and I get federal government is different than state government. I get it, folks, but we have not fixed the problem. We knew that baby boomers were going to start retiring at a very rapid rate in 2008, and so what did we do the years prior to that? We bickered back and forth, and we didn't solve the problem. We did not prepare for when baby boomers were going to start to enroll in Social Security and Medicare at a rapid rate, and if you look at it, from 94 to 08, there was a few hundred thousand that were added from 08 to beyond, it's like 2 million almost a year, right? So we, we've got a fundamental problem that we didn't prepare for. This fiscal commission is going to force us. It's going to bypass leadership. It's going to get to the floor and actually be able to vote it on. And guess what? All the work that was done from all of you on this panel will be included in it because you had amazing thought. You had the right direction. We just have to make action happen. And it has to be uncomfortable for every single one of us. Senator Portman, the question that I did have when I had five minutes, I don't have as much, anything to the structure of this that will create the right type of outcomes that we want to do? Like, could you speak to anything that you've, that you've watched this from the past? You have an amazing record of, of, of working in a bipartisan manner to solve some of these problems. Anything that you would like to just mention that needs to be structurally sound with this commission so we can, we can actually get something done? Well, first, I appreciate your passion for this issue and specifically the fiscal commission, but much more importantly that you realize that Congress has not been able to solve these problems. To your colleagues who've said, why can't we just do it? We've tried. <laughs> We've tried. And people say, well, when John Kasich was chairman of this committee, you know, we had a balanced budget. I was on the committee during that time. I was the leadership rep to the budget committee. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an entirely different situation. For, for, forget the fact that Republicans and Democrats were working better together. We were not in the fiscal hole we're in now. I mean, we're talking about a $2 trillion deficit likely this year versus a zero deficit. Think about that. I mean, we were looking then at about 60% uh, GDP, today 120% of GDP. It's a totally different ballgame. So we are, we're in a situation, I believe, where if we don't fix it, we're going to have to make some very tough adjustments uh, to these really important entitlement programs. But our economy, uh, the interest rates, and, and the, the inflation over time is going to eat up more and more of our paychecks from our constituents. But interest rates alone, think about this, if we're talking about 8% long-term rates, What's that going to do to the debt and deficit? It just explodes it. So we've got to do something. And, and my sense is yours, which is we need a catalyst. I guess the worst case scenario is the commission, you know, works on a bipartisan basis, is not able to come up with something. Um, but at least we've got this issue raised and we're talking about it. The second worst case is it comes to the floor of the House and Senate and can't pass. At least you're talking about it. At least it forces you to deal with this issue. And I think all of you in this committee ought to be for that because this is the committee <laughs> It wants that issue to be front and center. And again, I said earlier, I applaud you all because a lot of you have taken the lead on these issues and come up with your own policy proposals. Um, I see Mr. Peters about to, I, want, I want to hear from him because he's one of them that has. Takes, takes some guts to do it. And I appreciate your passion. Hope you continue it. I'll reserve some of my questions later. I'm now the chair, so I guess I can you go to five minutes. I want. And uh, we'll go, go to, 